Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter video number 24, Shapes of Molecules. In the last video we started to look at the difference between polar bonds and polar molecules. So just to reiterate then that the important difference between these is molecules are nonpolar if the sum of their bond dipoles in three dimensions is zero. So um, we looked at as one example of that carbon dioxide where the polarity is basically if we think about a, a the force that would be exerted on a point positive charge. So where would that go um, if the oxygens have a slight negative charge and the carbon has a slight positive charge or the electrons uh, for the carbon are locked up in bonds. Each of the oxygens actually has a couple of unbonded pairs um, around it. Then a point positive charge is going to go in that direction from the central point or that direction from the central point. If we resolve these forces, then they equal zero. They cancel out. And therefore, therefore, this is non-polar molecule. Now, if the sums of the dipoles in three dimensions is non-zero, then we have a polar molecule. And our example for that was water. So in this case, we have a slight positive region here, a slight positive region here, a slight negative region here, and of course, a couple of unpaired electrons, as well as the paired electrons that are part of these bonds. In this case, if we take our point positive charge and we put it here, it will go in this direction. If we put it here, it will go in this direction. If we add these together, that um, plus that, then we get a resultant uh, direction, which means that we have uh, a non-zero force and therefore we have a polar molecule. So therefore water can be described as a polar molecule, but carbon dioxide uh, is non-polar. So what are some of the key things that help um, affect the geometry or the arrangement in space of the electrons around the central atom? And there's a particular theory that we can use in order to help us understand, and it's called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VSEPR for short. And effectively what that means is that we have electrons sitting in pairs, and those pairs are going to exert a force of um, repulsion on other pairs of electrons. The stability in the molecule is therefore achieved by having the pairs oriented in such a way that they minimize those uh, repulsions. And obviously in three dimensions, if they get close further away from one pair of electrons, they may get closer to another pair of electrons. And so we want to try and have the arrangement in space that gets them as far away from each other as possible. So the final location of valence electron pairs is at the lowest energy state possible. We keep them apart. So we keep them apart as much as we possibly can. What this does is it provides us with a couple of very common shapes for the way that um, electrons are distributed around a central atom. So if you think about uh, one of the simplest ones is methane, um, which is carbon, hydrogen, four. CH4. Effectively, what we have is a tetrahedral arrangement. So that if you think about the original carbon atom sitting in the very center of this tetrahedron, there will be a, a, a hydrogen sitting directly above it, and then almost like a pyramid underneath, um, which can be rotated in three dimensions in order to create any three of these hydrogen sitting on the base and one sort of as the peak of the pyramid if you like. This is a tetrahedral shape and it's one of the most common um, arrangements that we find even when there are non-paired um, electrons. This arrangement often persists but we don't always see all of the bonding as a consequence of the fact that some of those electrons are not paired. In the case of carbon, carbon has four outer shell electrons and all of them are paired. 
where we have three bonding pairs and one non-bonding pair, such as what we would in uh, um, uh, ammonia, then we have uh, the two non-bonded pairs you can think of as being at the top of the pyramid. And so we still have our tetrahedral arrangement. It's just now we have no bond at the top, at the peak of the pyramid. So what we have is what's called a trigonal pyramid. Three bonds all sitting as the base of, if, of the pyramid, if you like. And now the nitrogen is sitting just above the plane um, in a little peak, but we don't have that extra uh, bond above. If we don't have a bonding pair like we do in a non-bonding pair like we do in nitrogen, say in boron trifluoride, then we have exactly the same arrangement, but this time the boron actually comes into the same plane as the fluorine. So rather than sitting above the plane, it actually sits in the plane. It's now called a trigonal planar. If you put this flat on the ground, all four of those atoms would touch the surface but for the trigonal pyramid, the central one will not. And when we have just two bonding pairs, so oxygen in water still has the tetrahedral arrangement, but only two of those electrons are actually bonding, and we call this a bent molecule. Um, just to add one more, we have looked at carbon dioxide. Uh, this is all pulled into a straight line, and it's called a linear molecule. Um, some interesting variations in the way that the molecules are shaped and we'll play with some of the molly mod kits in order to give you a chance to have a look at exactly what these different structures look like. Thanks for watching.